Madam Chirac, Mr. Foreign Minister, and honored guests and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the White House. And if this had been 24 hours earlier, I was going to say, and if I may welcome to this splendid spring evening. <clears throat> <laughs> well, we've spoken today of the challenges that confront our two great nations. This evening, Nancy and I'd like to invite you to relax. Mr. Prime Minister, Madam Chirac, you'll always be welcome friends in this house. And by the way, I hope you all enjoyed this evening's dinner wine. You see, it was produced in California <laughs> as part of a joint French-American venture. <laughs> But no one can live in this house for long without feeling the vibrant spirit of our French and American forebears, of Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin, of Lafayette and Rochambeau. And I just have to believe they'd be proud to know that the common commitment to freedom that served as the foundation of our friendship so long ago remains alive in the White House tonight. But even as we look to the legendary figures of the past, we look as well to the major French and American figures of the present. And certainly there are many here tonight, many who personify the bonds between us in diplomacy, in culture, in commerce, in entertainment, and science. Just recently, we reached an important agreement regarding AIDS research, an agreement recognizing that French and American scientists stand together in the forefront of the battle against this tragic disease. To everyone, all of our eminent guests, welcome. This evening, too, Nancy and I cannot help but recall our own travels to France during these last six years. I remember especially meeting with my summit colleagues in the halls and gardens of the Palace of Versailles, that place of immense beauty so alive with the history of France. And we remember standing on the beaches of Normandy with the channel waters behind and the cliffs above thinking of the men who fought and died on that terrible day nearly 43 years ago, when the fate of the free world hung in the balance, the men who fought and died for freedom. As is only befitting with close friends, Mr. Prime Minister, our discussions were frank and constructive. We covered East-West issues, arms control, the struggle against terrorism, regional conflicts, a broad agenda. We discussed our differences on trade issues and how to narrow those differences in ways that would advance the economic well-being of our peoples. I know that you continued those discussions through the day with Secretary Schultz, Secretary Weinberger, and Secretary Baker, and that tomorrow you will meet with Vice President Bush. As always, our discussions were able to take almost or for granted certain shared values. Yet these values, liberty, democracy, the dignity of each individual, these values are sacred. And nowhere are they more important or more in evidence today than in the strength of the Atlantic Alliance and in the unshakable commitment of the United States to share in the defense of Europe. So it is that even as we seek to negotiate arms control and other agreements with the Soviet Union, We'll continue to consult closely with our European allies. Our message is clear. To friend and foe alike, America stands with Europe. Permit me now to invite you all to join me in raising a glass in friendship. To France and to our honored guests, Prime Minister Chirac and Madame Chirac. <clears throat> Monsieur le Président, Madame, Mesdames, Messieurs, mon épouse et moi-même sommes profondément touchés, Monsieur le Président, de l'accueil 
que vous nous avez réservé et de cette magnifique soirée qui couronne la journée que nous venons de passer à Washington sous le signe de l'amitié. Cette chaleureuse réception qui associe dans cette si célèbre et superbe demeure Américains et Français, hommes et femmes du monde des arts, des sciences, de la politique, je tiens, madame, à vous en remercier tout particulièrement, car je sais quelle attention personnelle vous y avez portée. Sachez combien nous en apprécions l'élégance, la chaleur et l'amitié. Je tiens aussi à vous dire, monsieur le Président, combien nous sommes heureux d'être avec vous ici, ce soir, avec vous qui avez su réconcilier l'Amérique avec elle-même, lui redonner la confiance et l'espérance, bref, rendre sa force aux rêves américains. Et vous savez, l'estime, l'amitié et aussi l'affection que vous portent les peuples européens et en particulier le peuple français. En arrivant ce matin, j'ai tenu à vous délivrer ce message du cœur. La France est plus qu'une alliée, elle est une amie fidèle. L'Amérique, qui se croit parfois mal aimée, ne mesure pas toujours l'intensité des sentiments que lui porte le peuple de France. <rire> Ces sentiments n'ont pas été tissés uniquement à travers les épreuves communes au cours desquelles nous nous sommes toujours trouvés côte à côte. Ces sentiments ne sont pas dus seulement au fait que nous partageons les mêmes valeurs de liberté. Ces sentiments, ils sont plus que jamais vivants, parce que, spontanément, nous nous posons les mêmes questions, que nous faisons face aux mêmes défis et que nous ressentons une volonté commune de les surmonter. Et je retrouve la même interrogation que l'Amérique se pose sur elle-même, la même volonté d'aller de l'avant, de faire face à l'avenir, de faire triompher l'espérance sur le doute que j'ai connu quand j'étais jeune étudiant ici, il y a 30 ans. Mais je tiens aussi à souligner combien la France, au sein de l'Alliance des démocraties occidentales, se trouve être en Europe un partenaire solide sur lequel les États-Unis peuvent compter. Cette solidité, elle la doit à l'accord profond de l'ensemble de son peuple sur les principes qui régissent sa politique étrangère et sa défense nationale. Principe défini il y a 30 ans par le général de Gaulle et que tous les gouvernements de la France, sans exception, ont suivi depuis lors. Aucun autre pays européen ne bénéficie d'un tel consensus sur les grandes lignes de la politique étrangère. Respect des alliances, indépendance nationale, présence dans le monde. En Europe la France agit en faveur du développement, de l'unité, dans le respect des diversités. En Afrique, elle combat les tentatives de déstabilisation. En Amérique latine, elle soutient la lutte de la démocratie contre la dictature. Au Proche-Orient, elle tient à, di à dialoguer avec tous pour mieux rechercher les voies de la paix. Dans le Pacifique, elle souhaite contribuer à l'harmonie et, et à la stabilité de la région. Enfin, la France souhaite ardemment qu'une plus grande générosité des pays riches puisse éviter l'accroissement de l'endettement et de la pauvreté dans un grand nombre de pays. Elle entend poursuivre une action tenace dans ce sens. Aucun autre pays européen ne connaît un tel consensus en faveur du développement et de la modernisation de son appareil de défense et notamment d'une force de dissuasion nucléaire lui permettant de faire respecter en toutes circonstances son indépendance et sa liberté. Enfin, comment ne pas se féliciter de l'accord unanime du peuple français pour ne pas céder au chantage du terrorisme et rester dans l'adversité solidaire et déterminée. Mais le message que je viens vous porter aujourd'hui, Monsieur le Président, c'est aussi celui d'une France nouvelle, instruite par les leçons de la crise économique et qui, s'écartant des schémas dépassés, a décidé d'entreprendre une mutation profonde et de changer une, ses habitudes séculaires pour mieux faire face aux exigences de l'avenir. Depuis mille ans, 
la monarchie a forgé l'unité de la France au prix d'une nécessaire centralisation, poursuivie par les révolutions françaises et par l'Empire, comme l'a fort bien analysé Alexis de Tocqueville, dont vous me parliez tout à l'heure. Dans un pays où, pendant des siècles, tout a procédé du pouvoir, c'est une véritable révolution que celle qui consiste aujourd'hui à redonner au secteur privé les entreprises qui avaient été nationalisées, que de laisser à l'initiative individuelle les moyens audio audiovisuels encore entre les mains de l'État, que d'abolir les réglementations qui entravaient l'efficacité de l'économie, que de transférer un grand nombre de responsabilités aux collectivités locales. J'ai été désigné comme Premier ministre, il y a un an, par M. François Mitterrand, président de la République française. Le gouvernement que je dirige a reçu mission du peuple français de libérer les énergies de notre pays, de laisser libre cours à ses facultés d'initiative et de création qui se sont de tout temps exprimées dans le domaine des arts et qui doivent se révéler aujourd'hui dans celui de l'économie et de l'entreprise. Fidèle, solide, ouverte au monde, voilà, Monsieur le Président, la France qui vous rend visite. Et je lève mon verre en l'honneur du président Ronald Reagan, président des États-Unis d'Amérique, de Madame Nancy Reagan, à laquelle je présente mes très respectueux hommages, à l'avenir de l'amitié et de la coopération entre la France et les États-Unis. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci, Madame. Mr. President, <clears throat> Mrs. Reagan, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, my wife and I are extremely touched by the warmth of your welcome, as we are by this beautiful reception, which marks the end of a day we have just spent under the sign of friendship in this city of Washington. I wish to expend special thanks for this warm reception, which brings together in this famous and beautiful house men and women of America and France, from the worlds of the arts, of science, and of politics. And these thanks go to you, Mrs. Reagan, especially because I know the personal part you have played in preparing this reception. And let me say how much we appreciate the elegance, the warmth, and the friendship of it all. And let me tell you also, Mr. President, how happy we are to be with you here tonight, with a man who has managed to reconcile America with itself, to restore its self-confidence, and to give it the chance to hope anew. In other words, to restore the vigor of the American dream. And you know what high regard, friendship, and yes, indeed, affection, Europeans and the people of France in particular have for you, sir. When I arrived here this morning, what I said came from the heart. France is more than an ally. France is a faithful friend. America is sometimes convinced that uh, she is insufficiently loved and does not always however, set sufficient store by the intensity of France's feelings for America. These feelings are not only the result of the trials we have always borne side by side. They are not solely due to the fact that we share the same values, liberty. Today, these ties are stronger than ever before because we naturally ask ourselves the same questions, because we have to meet the same challenges, and because we share a common will precisely to do so. I am rediscovering the same self-questioning self spirit, the same will to, to go forward, to face the future with open eyes, to make hope triumph over doubt, which I first experienced 30 years ago when I visited your country as a student. But I also want to emphasize how much France in the Alliance of Western Democracies is indeed a strong European partner that the United States can rely upon. And this strength is due to the deep commitment of the whole of the people of my country to the principles that govern our foreign policy and our national security. These principles are those which General de Gaulle defined 30 years ago. And all of the governments of France since then without fail have abided by them. In no other European country is there such a large consensus on the main lines of foreign policy. 
respect for existing alliances, national independence, and being present in world affairs. In Europe, France is working both for the development of unity and respect at the same time for diversity. In Africa, she is fighting attempts at destabilization. In Latin America, defending democracy against a dictatorship. In the Middle East, she wishes to engage in dialogue with all parties concerned, so as better to explore the paths of peace. In the Pacific, she wishes to enhance the region's harmony and stability. And finally, France fervently hopes that the rich countries of the world, through greater generosity, will be able to prevent a larger number of countries from sinking even deeper into debt and experiencing even worse poverty. And France intends to work steadfastly towards the attainment of this goal. In no other European country is there such a consensus in favor of development and modernization of defense capabilities, and more particularly in favor of a nuclear deterrent that guarantees respect for national independence and liberty in all circumstances. And finally, one cannot forget the French people's unanimous agreement not to give in to terrorist blackmail and remain in adversity one and determined. But, Mr. President, the message which I bear today is also that of a new France, which has learnt the lessons of economic crisis and has decided to turn its back on outdated remedies and patterns and to undertake deep change, modifying century-old habits in order better to meet the requirements of tomorrow. Over the last thousand years, monarchy has shaped France's identity, and the price of this was a necessary process of centralization, which under the revolution and the Napoleonic Empire were indeed consolidated. And as you were mentioning yourself, Mr. President, to me, Alexis de Tocqueville quite aptly remarked, in a country where for centuries at end, everything was handed down by the top of the power structure, Things had to change, and indeed an actual revolution is today underway, in which hitherto nationalized companies are being handed back to the private sector, in which the audiovisual media, still under state control, are being given over to private initiative, in which regulations that long stifled the economy's efficiency are being eliminated, in which an increasing number of responsibilities are being transferred to local authorities. Now, a year ago, François Mitterrand, president of the French Republic, appointed me prime minister. The people of France have entrusted to my government the mission to release the energies of our country and to give free rein to its creativity and can-do spirit, which have traditionally found an outlet in the arts and which must today show their mettle in economy, business, and industry. Loyal, strong, open to the world around it, Mr. President, such as the France that is visiting you today. I wish to raise my grass in honor of Mr. Ronald Reagan, President of the United States of America, Mrs. Nancy Reagan, to whom I present my most respectful regards for the future friendship and cooperation between France and the United States. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mrs. Reagan. associated with. I sat in my dressing room last night and watched a portion of the Academy Awards show. And it was really very, very nice to see two pals of mine win, finally, the coveted Oscar. One overdue, Mr. Paul Newman. I was thrilled for him. And the very dear friend that uh, I met in the early 60s. The song comes from the motion picture that he starred in and was as well nominated for an Academy Award, and in my opinion, of which I do respect, should have won it. But he got it last night. His name is Michael Caine, and the song is, What's it all about? I'll be, is it just? For the moment we live, what 
What's it all about? When you sort it out, tell fee, are we meant to take more than we give? Are we meant to be kind? And If only fools are kind, I'll be. Then I guess it is wise to be cruel. And if life belongs only to the strong, I'll be what we lend on and on. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. Before we go further, there are three things that are extremely important to an entertainer in any form of the word entertainment. They do happen to be the place that they are performing, the people for whom they are performing. And we will refer to these incredible musician sharing the stage with me simply as the White House Strings, if you please. We're also going to take this time to introduce to you some folk that travel around this world with me, and I do deem them all extremely special. inside my fantasies and made each one come true something no one else had ever found the way to do I've kept the memories one by one since you took me in and I know I'll never love this way again I know Before the good is gone I know I'll never Love this way again Hold on Hold on Hold on 
You know, I know a fool will lose tomorrow, reaching back for yesterday. I, and remember just how good it's been. And I know. success in the very beginning of this year, a month ago to be exact, the year as well. So on behalf of my dear friends who made it all possible, Gladys Knight, Stevie Wonder, Elton John, Carol Bear Sager, Bert Backrack, and myself, we thank you all for believing that's what friends are for. And I never thought I'd feel this way And as far as I'm concerned I'm glad I got the chance to say That I do believe I love you And if I should ever go away Well then close your eyes and try To feel the way we do today and then if you can remember, remember to keep smiling, keep shining, knowing you can always count on me, for sure, that's what friends are for, for good times, for bad times, I'll be on your side. Well, you came and opened me And now there's so much more I see And so by the way, I thank you And then, for the times when we're apart Well, just close your eyes and know these words are coming from my heart And then if you can remember To keep smiling and keep shining Knowing you can always count on me For sure That's what friends are for For good times, for bad times Keep shining, knowing you can always count on me for sure. Well, that's what friends are for, for good times and for bad times. I'll be on your side forevermore. That's what friends are shining knowing you can always count on me for sure well that's what brings a ball good times bad times i'll be on your side forevermore that 
that's what friends are for. So keep smiling and shining and count on me for sure. You see, that's what friends are for. Keep smiling and shining. Count on me for sure. You see, that's what friends are for. Thank you so very, very much. I, uh, you heard a description of the hardships that Dionne Warwick made to come here tonight. I think there's one thing she didn't tell you. I have a feeling that she also came here against the advice of her doctor. And uh, I think that was pretty heroic. It was typical of a Warwick performance. She started on a peak and went up from there. I have a note here because I didn't want to make any mistakes on this. A career that after two decades has seen hit after hit walk on by anyone who had a heart. Do you know the way to San Jose? And now what she closed with her current hit features, lovely melody as we know and the fun lyrics and meaningful lyrics of that's what friends are for. And her generosity is also akin to her talent and ability because the proceeds of this last are being donated to the American Foundation for AIDS Research. Minister and Madam Warwick will allow me, I think that what she shared with us tonight is best described in her language, choix de vivre. Thank you very much. Thank all of you for the sacrifice you've made and for being here. Thank you. Thank you.